Deuxième lecture. Number one, Bill S-15. En débat, sénatrice Galvez. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Colleagues, I rise today to speak about Bill S-15, a bill that aims to protect elephants and great apes from captivity, that it's not in the best interest of their welfare or is not for the purpose of a scientific research or conservation program. I would like to begin by acknowledging the work of the government in putting this bill forward. This bill is a step towards fulfilling one of their campaign promises to protect animals in captivity, which also appears in the Monday letter of the Minister of the Environment. I would also like to thank former Senator Sinclair and Senator Klein for their leadership in bringing this same issue forward through the James Goodall Act. My speech will touch principles of Bill S-15 that aims to protect elephants and great apes from the harms of captivity, but also seeks to end the import and export of living elephants and great apes into and out of Canada, except by permit issued by the minister. This legislation would, for example, prevent the future occurrence of a situation similar to the heartbreaking and natural life lived by Lucy a 47-year-old Asian elephant who has been held in captivity at the Edmonton Valley Zoo from the age of two. Lucy, who has lived most of her life in captivity, is ailing and has been deemed medically unfit for travel and therefore cannot be relocated to an elephant sanctuary in the United States. Lucy will remain in Edmonton where she is forced to endure harsh winter weather and sub-zero temperatures. More. More and more Canadians are of the view that wild animals should have the right to a wild life and should not be held in captivity unless there is a direct benefit to them or to the conservation of their species. Bill S-15 will contribute to ensuring elephants and great apes are free to live a wild life. However, we should also provide protection to other animals, including, for example, big cats, bears, wolves, seals, and reptiles. In fact, we should consider increased protection for the 800 wild species for whom there is abundance, abundant scientific evidence that they suffer greatly in captivity because their natural movements and behavior are severely restricted. Keeping these animals in captivity is cruel and inhuman and is often exploitative and dangerous. There should be only exceptional circumstances for keeping any wild animal in captivity when it serves the animal's best interest and for research that has conservation benefits. We have a duty and an opportunity to raise the bar to protect the dignity of wild animals and to set an example for our peers in other countries. Wildlife protection policy should recognize that global wildlife trade contributes to biodiversity loss, contributes to mass extinction, and poses a risk to our health as it contributes to the risk of zoonotic diseases. It should also address Canadian biodiversity crisis through transformative changes, given that, for example, the exotic pet trade regrettably remains a significant and growing incentive for animal imports in Canada, and that the nature of this practice requires close human contact with wild animals, posing a potential risk from a disease perspective. I hope during committee study these and other issues will be brought up by expert witnesses. Last year, the United Nations Biodiversity Conference held in Montreal, COP15, culminated with a historic agreement intended to guide global action on nature through 2030 and call on us to ensure 30 percent of the planet and 30 percent of degraded ecosystem were placed under protection by 2030. The coming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework, GBF, provides tangible actions to stop and reverse nature loss in order to address biodiversity loss, restore ecosystem, and protect indigenous rights. The four overarching global goals of the framework include halting human-induced extinction of threatened species and reducing the rate of extinction of all species tenfold by, 50, by 2050 sustainable use and management of the biodiversity to ensure 
that nature's contributions to people are valued, maintained, and enhanced. Fair sharing of the benefits from the utilization of genetic resources and digital sequence information on genetic resources, and that adequate means of implementing the GBF be accessible to all parties, particularly least developed countries and small islands developing, developing states. Human activity is responsible for a dangerous decline in nature, and there are one million plant and animal species threatened with extinction, <coughs> many within the next decades. Perspective of our relations with nature and wildlife are changing, and are changing for good. Since times immemorial, indigenous people have known this, but now science is giving them reason. We must recognize that all living creatures are interconnected. Each organism, a species, and ecosystem is an integral part of a network whose strength is only as strong as the weakest link. Humans depend on nature, not the other way around. A new approach based on ecocentrism is taking force. This approach plays intrinsic value of all living organisms and their natural environment, regardless of their perceived usefulness or importance to human beings. Last week in Dubai at COP28, there was a long overdue recognition of the important role indigenous peoples have in the development of effective nature-based solutions and implementing climate solutions. Indigenous people and their traditional knowledge is invaluable in, in preserving biodiversity and ecosystem health. Like indigenous people, we must take a holistic approach instead of considering a species in isolation. The plus, au terme de la COP28, les partis ont adopté une décision rappelant le 13e préambule de l'accord de Paris qui note l'importance de veiller à l'intégrité de tous les écosystèmes y compris les océans et à la protection de la biodiversité reconnue par certaines cultures comme la terre nourricière et qui note l'importance pour certains de la notion de justice climatique dans l'action menée face au changement climatique. Selon l'Observatoire international des droits de la nature, il s'agit là d'une avancée, puisque pour la première fois, une mention est faite de la terre nourricière dans les dispositions concernant les approches fondées, non fondées sur les marchés promus de l'accord de Paris. Une telle avancée résulte du leadership et d'une proposition de texte de la délégation de la Bolivie, dans laquelle aurait été reconnue l'importance de renforcer les droits de la terre nourricière et les approches centrées sur la terre nourricière dans le contexte de l'identification du développement et de la mise en œuvre d'approches non fondées sur le marché. During the 2021 federal ele election campaign, the government made a commitment to Canadians to work with partners to curb illegal wildlife trade and end elephant and rhinoceros tusk trade in Canada. I applaud the Minister of Environment and Climate Change recent announcement of a stricter approach to trade for Canada that will further limit the ability to transport all elephant, ivory, and rhinoceros horns across Canadian borders, which includes a prohibition on the import and export of raw elephant elephant ivory and raw rhinoceros horns, with few exceptions, and a prohibition on the importation of elephant ivory and rhinoceros horn hunting trophies. However, curbing the illegal wildlife trade of other species, including big cat, is equally important. Another issue that should be studied in committee is how to raise the standards of zoos and evaluate if society still finds it, it acceptable in its current forms of operation. Among other things, the establishment of transparent legal and science-based standards for zoos that will ensure animals such as tiger, lions, and many species of monkeys that remain in captivity are no longer housed in undersized, flimsy cages and will ensure that big cats and other exotic wild animals are not held without a permit 
by people who lack the expertise, the training, and the facilities necessary to provide a safe and healthy life to the wild animals under their care. Maybe you have heard the news that on last November, a kangaroo escaped from its handlers east of Toronto during transportation to Quebec. The kangaroo was found and caught by police, roamed freely for more than three days. Fortunately, the kangaroo was seemingly unharmed, and there were not reported injuries to people. Colleagues, there are gaps in captive wildlife law and regulation, and it is therefore no surprise that wild animals escape roadside zoos. This is why advocacy groups such as the World Animal Protection Canada are calling for a stricter regulation to protect both captive wildlife by ensuring zoos meet the highest standards of animal welfare and public health and safety. The committee could consider the need to take animal welfare and public health and safety even further. As an under-regulated and unsustainable sector, there continues to be a need for more rules to fight against the trade of wild animals. Undoubtedly, the legal trade of wildlife only fuels illegal trade, and we need efficient regulations to improve the data collection and monitoring system that exists in Canada which prioritizes zoonotic detection and monitoring in wild animals used for food. We must do more to reduce animal suffering and to reduce the risk of illness and the loss of biodiversity. Colleagues, the new Senate is fulfilling its duty of sober second thought and proposing integrated, holistic, rigorous, coherent legislation with vision. Our legislative bills aim to solve important problems in Canadian society. In this new Senate, we pride ourselves on well-thought, comprehensive, high-quality bills. In some cases, some ideas have put forward in the Senate public bills are picked up by the government, sometimes in part. However, the, the ideas need to be packed in full. The Jane Goodall Act, which also aims to protect animals, appears to me superior to Bill S-15 because it is more comprehensive. Let's send Bill S-15 to the Committee on Energy, the Environment and Natural Resources for a rigorous study so it can become an impactful bill that protects more wild animals and move us much closer to the 30 by 30 goal by protecting biodiversity while also protecting human health. Merci, thank you, Megwitch.